Hi, I'm Anna. Before we dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more. My life's been a roller coaster, juggling a demanding job while caring for my mother, who's unfortunately fallen into the grips of addiction. It's a tough world out here in our small town, but I've been managing somehow. The sun had barely risen over the sleepy town when I stepped into the kitchen. The aroma of brewing coffee filled the room as Mom stumbled in, her eyes weary and distant. Morning, Anna. Coffee smells good. Thought you'd need it, I said, recalling the late-night sounds of her return. She took a sip, her gaze drifting. Met someone last night. Oh, that's interesting. My voice was cautious, masking the concern bubbling inside. He's different, Anna. Wealthy, and he seems to care about me, Mom said, a rare spark in her eyes. That's great, Mom. Just be careful. As days passed, Mom's new relationship with the wealthy man grew, bringing subtle yet unsettling changes. Her treatment towards me shifted, and the warmth we once shared began to cool. Anna, could you lend me some cash? Frank and I have plans tonight, Mom asked one evening, an edge of expectation in her voice. Okay, but remember the bills, I replied, handing her the money. She brushed off my concerns with a wave. Don't worry so much, Anna. Live a little. But my life was far from carefree. My days blurred into a routine of work and tending to Mom, keeping her out of harm's way. I felt increasingly like an outsider in my own home, a guest in the life I once knew. Anna, mind staying at Sarah's tonight? Frank's coming over, and we need privacy. Again, Mom. I was hoping to rest tonight. Just this once, Anna. Please. Reluctantly, I agreed, packing a small bag and heading to Sarah's. The walk under the starlit sky was a brief escape from the turmoil at home. Sarah welcomed me with open arms. Rough day, Anna? She inquired, sensing my distress. Just the usual, you know, mom stuff. Settling into Sarah's guest room, the reality hit me. My own home didn't feel like mine anymore. My mother, once my anchor, was drifting further away, lost in a world I no longer recognized. The next morning, I returned to find Mom cheerfully humming in the kitchen. Slept well at Sarah's, Anna? It was okay. Got to head to work now. She nodded, her attention already fading. By the way, Frank mentioned helping me with money. Isn't that great? Sure, Mom, I responded, feigning enthusiasm. Inside, I felt a growing rift between us a chasm that seemed to widen with each passing day. The tension at home escalated as Mom's behavior became more unpredictable. Our conversations grew short and strained, filled with arguments or silence. The once warm and lively house now felt like a battleground, each day a struggle to keep things normal. During quiet moments, I'd stare out the window, longing for a different life, one where the streets of our small town brought comfort instead of reminders of what I yearned for but couldn't have. Anna, Pass the salt, please, Mom asked one evening, breaking the silence. Handing her the salt, our fingers touched briefly. Here you go. Thanks. Frank thinks it's time for some changes around here. Changes? Like what, Mom? She hesitated, then said softly. He thinks you should move out. For independence, you know? Her words struck me hard. Move out? But this is my home, Mom. Where would I go? It's just a suggestion, Anna. Frank knows people in the city. It could be a fresh start for you. A fresh start. The phrase echoed in my mind as I sat there, numb. The life I had known was falling apart, my only support pushing me away. Think about it, Anna. It might be what you need. That night, as I lay in bed, the weight of my situation was overwhelming. I knew change was coming, but was I ready to leave everything behind and step into the unknown? As dawn broke, painting the town in soft light, I made up my mind. I'll consider it, Mom. I'll think about everything. And with that, a new chapter in my life was about to begin. One filled with uncertainty, but also a faint glimmer of hope. After the unsettling conversation about moving out, a heavy tension hung in the air of our small home. Mom's behavior, increasingly influenced by her addiction and Frank, grew more volatile and unpredictable. One fateful evening, I returned home to find Mom and Frank sitting sternly in the living room an ominous aura surrounding them. Anna, we need to talk, Mom stated, her voice laced with an uncharacteristic firmness. What's going on? I asked, a sense of dread building within me. It's about your living situation, Mom began, 
her eyes hard. You need to move out, immediately. I was stunned. But you said it was just a suggestion. This is my home, Frank interjected, his voice devoid of warmth. It's for your own good, Anna. You're old enough to be on your own. But this is my home, my voice cracked under the strain of my emotions. Anna, I won't have you arguing. This is my house and I want you out, Mom shouted, her words cutting through me like a knife. I stood there, paralyzed, as the harsh reality of my mother's words sunk in. She had chosen Frank over me. With a heavy heart, I packed my belongings, each item a stark reminder of the life I was being ripped away from. Faced with no other option, I reached out to an old friend, Maggie, in the neighboring city. She kindly offered me a place to stay. Anna, you can stay here as long as you need, Maggie assured me, her kindness a balm to my wounded heart. Thank you, Maggie. I still can't believe she just threw me out. People can be cruel, Anna, but remember, you're stronger than you think. Despite her comforting words, the sting of Mom's betrayal lingered. At night, I lay awake, gazing at the unfamiliar city skyline, pondering the cruel twist my life had taken. Determined not to be defeated, I dove into job hunting in the city. The fast-paced environment was intimidating, but it also offered a glimmer of hope, a chance for a new beginning. My efforts paid off when I landed a job at a marketing firm. Welcome to the team, Anna, said Mr. Davis, my new boss. Thank you. I won't let you down, I replied, embracing the new challenge. Adapting to city life was a whirlwind of new experiences. The constant buzz, the sea of faces, and the towering buildings were a stark contrast to my former life. One evening, as I walked through a bustling city park, the weight of my solitude hit me. I was alone, starting over in a vast city. Yet there was a liberating feeling in this realization. I was now the master of my destiny. Anna, it's all on you now, I whispered to myself. A strange mix of apprehension and excitement filling me. Weeks turned into months, and I began to build a new life. I made friends, explored the city, and even started dating. The past, with its pain and betrayal, slowly started to fade into the background. Mr. Davis was a fair but demanding boss, and I quickly earned a reputation for being hardworking and reliable. Anna, you're doing great here. Keep it up, Mr. Davis would often say offering a nod of approval that fueled my determination. Outside work, I slowly started building a social life. The city's vibrant pulse was infectious, and I found myself making friends in the most unlikely places. A coffee shop, a yoga class, even in the crowded elevator of my office building. Hey Anna, join us for drinks after work? Asked Jenna, one of my colleagues one day. Sure, sounds fun, I replied surprised at how easily I was sliding into this new social circle. It was at one of these after-work gatherings that I met Chris, a kind-hearted, charming man who shared my love of old movies and spicy food. Our connection was instant, and before I knew it, we were dating. Anna, I've never met anyone quite like you, Chris said one evening as we walked along the river, the city lights reflecting in the water like a million stars. I could say the same about you, Chris, I replied my heart swelling with a happiness I hadn't felt in a long time. As months passed, my life in the city started feeling less like a temporary escape and more like home. I had a good job, a circle of friends, and a loving relationship, things I'd once thought were out of my reach. Then came the news about the farm. The letter from my father's lawyer was unexpected, a reminder of a past I thought I had left behind. The farm, a quaint, sprawling piece of land on the outskirts of the city, was now mine. Holding the deed in my hands, I felt a surge of hope and independence. This farm wasn't just a piece of property. It symbolized a new beginning, a chance to build something of my own. Anna, this is amazing. You own a farm, exclaimed Maggie when I showed her the deed. I know, it's hard to believe. It feels like, like a new chapter. With Chris by my side, I started planning for the future. We visited the farm often, dreaming up ideas for its potential. It was during one of these visits, under the open sky and amidst the fields, that Chris proposed. Anna, will you marry me? He asked, his eyes shining with love and hope. Yes, Chris, yes, I exclaimed, tears of joy streaming down my face. Life seemed almost perfect, a stark contrast to the chaos and pain of my past. But just as I was settling into this newfound happiness, the past came knocking. One evening, 
As Chris and I were planning our wedding, there was a knock on my apartment door. It was Mom. She looked frail, her eyes desperate. Anna, I need your help, she said, her voice barely a whisper. I stood there, frozen, as a whirlwind of emotions swept through me. Anger, betrayal, and a flicker of concern all battled within me. Mom? What are you doing here? How did you find me? I... I've been in trouble, Anna. Frank left and I have debts. I have nowhere else to go. Her words hung in the air, a stark reminder of the pain she had caused. Yet, seeing her so broken, something in me stirred. Mom, this is a lot to take in. I... I'll need some time to think. As I closed the door, my mind was a tumult of thoughts. My stable, happy life had been thrown into disarray once again by the very person who had set me on this path. Anna, are you okay? Chris asked, concern etching his face. I don't know, Chris. I really don't know. The night was long and sleepless. The past and present collided, leaving me to ponder the next step. My mother, the woman who had turned her back on me, now stood at my doorstep, seeking help. As dawn broke, I realized that whatever decision I made, it would not only shape my future, but also close a chapter of my past. The road ahead was uncertain, but I knew one thing. I was no longer the same person who had been cast out of her home. I was stronger, wiser, and ready to face whatever came my way. The morning after Mom's unexpected visit, I found myself at a crossroads. My past, represented by the frail figure of my mother, clashed with the present, a life I had painstakingly built from the ashes she left me in. After hours of contemplation, I made my decision. I would help Mom, but on my terms. Mom, I will help you, but you have to agree to my conditions, I said firmly when we met at a local cafe. What conditions? she asked, a hint of desperation in her voice. You need to get professional help for your addiction, and in return, I'll take care of your debts, I stated, the words heavy with the weight of our shared history. Help? Like rehab? Mom's voice wavered. Yes, rehab. It's non-negotiable. The negotiations were tense. I enlisted the help of a lawyer to draft a contract, a legally binding document that outlined the terms of our agreement. It stipulated that Mom would enter a rehabilitation center, and in return, I would pay off her debts. The process was emotionally draining, blending the cold precision of legal terms with the complexity of our fractured relationship. Are you sure about this, Anna? Chris asked concern evident in his eyes. I have to do this, Chris. It's the only way to help her and... and close this chapter for good. The day Mom was to sign the contract, my heart pounded with a mixture of anxiety and hope. We met at her house, the place that once was my home, now a mere echo of past memories. Here's the contract, Mom. Once you sign this, I'll take care of everything, I said, handing her the papers. She skimmed through them, her hand trembling slightly. Okay, Anna. I trust you. As she signed, I couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. The contract she thought was solely about her debts was more than that. The last page, cleverly disguised amongst the legal jargon, was her admission form to the rehab center. Thank you, Mom. I'll make the arrangements, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Watching Mom being taken to the rehab center was a bittersweet moment. I knew it was for the best but it was hard not to feel like I was betraying her trust, even if it was to save her from herself. In the weeks that followed, I visited her regularly. Each visit was a reminder of our tumultuous past and a hope for a better future. Slowly, I began to see changes in her, the clarity in her eyes, the return of her strength. It was a slow process, but there was progress. Reflecting on my journey, I realized how much I had grown. From a young woman cast out of her home, to someone who found strength in adversity, built a new life, and eventually confronted her past with a blend of justice and compassion. Anna, you've changed so much, Mom said during one of my visits, a note of pride in her voice. I had to, Mom. We both did. The journey was not easy, but it was necessary. It taught me the true meaning of resilience, the complexity of family ties and the power of taking control of one's destiny. As I stood on my farm, now thriving under my care, I realized that this journey was not just about confronting my past or helping mom. It was about finding myself, understanding the nuances of life, 
and learning that strength comes in many forms, sometimes in letting go, sometimes in holding on, and often in doing what is right, even when it's hard. Life is a tapestry of choices and chances, I mused, gazing at the horizon, and I'm just beginning to weave mine. The story of Anna's journey has now reached its conclusion, but before you go, let's delve into a thought-provoking aspect of her story. Anna faced a tough decision, to help her mother who had once betrayed her. She chose to help, but with a condition that led her mother into rehab. This brings us to an intriguing question. If you were in Anna's shoes, would you have made the same decision to help your mother, knowing all the pain and betrayal she caused? Or would you have chosen a different path? This is a complex issue, blending the lines between forgiveness, justice, and personal boundaries. We're eager to hear your thoughts on this. Share your opinions in the comments below. Let's have a meaningful discussion. And if you enjoyed this story and the discussions it sparks, please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. Your support means a lot and helps us continue bringing these stories to life. Thank you for following Anna's journey with us.